So I'm always on the lookout for new distros, and today we're going to be taking a look at one that I've actually never heard of before until just a few days ago, and that's Trom Jaro. Now, the name itself left me a little bit wary because it's not a very good name, and I don't understand the reasonings behind why they named it such, but you can see from the name that it is based on Manjaro, and that added a little bit more to my wariness simply because... Manjaro and I don't really have the best relationship when it comes to our past, so I was wary going into this, but I've spent a couple days with it now, and honestly, I'm pretty surprised. So today we're going to be taking a look at Tromjaro, a Manjaro-based distribution. Now, I do these distro first looks a little bit differently than everybody else, so I do them from hardware and VMs, a mixture of, depending on how I have to do the recording. So the installation, which you'll see, is going to be on a VM. Everything else is on a hardware. It's on my laptop. So just know that how things look may differ depending on what part of the video we're in. Also, I don't go through piece by piece of what's installed, simply because if you want to know all of those things, you can install it yourself. Instead, I aim to answer three questions with these things. What is it? Who is it for, and is it good? Those are the three questions that we're going to try to answer today about Traum Jaro. So, let's go ahead and jump in. The first question that we have to answer, then, is what is it? Well, Traum Jaro is based on Manjaro, as the name suggests. It is a XFCE-based distribution. It uses XFCE extensively, as you'll see throughout the video. And they've done a phenomenal job, and an extensive job, of customizing XFCE to look not so XFCE like and I think they've done a really good job so their idea behind this distribution is to create something that is trade free now I was confused by this concept of trade free but their idea is to make their distribution rely on software that has no need for contribution from its community in terms of money or things like that it expects nothing in return and it puts nothing inside of its distribution, or the developers put nothing inside of their distribution that requires any t t sort of monetary or data compensation. So things that would require you to give your data in return for using it, it doesn't actually exist inside of this distro, at least in theory, right? So they have a very moral purpose for creating their distribution. Now, whether or not that's something you agree with or even care about is going to be up to you. Me personally, I use proprietary software all the time, so I can't really you know, judge anybody based on their uh, morals on this particular subject. But for those of you who truly care about where your software comes from, this is a interesting distribution. Now, I will say that there's a difference between trade free and libre. So if you've ever used anything like GNU you know, Geeks or anything like that that uses the Libre kernel, meaning that there are absolutely nothing proprietary about the kernel or anything else like that, then you will have experienced something completely different than what Tromjaro actually offers. They use the traditional Linux kernel. In this case, it's the Manjaro kernel. So it's not quite as Libre as maybe you'd expect. Instead, they're using a different term called Trade Free. Now... What does all this mean in terms of software that's included? And the answer to that question is that they don't include things that you would expect to have any sort of data collection or anything that would require you to pay for. So there's nothing like free office or anything like that. And that's really not all that unusual for a Linux distribution. But where they've taken it a little bit further is that every single choice that they've made in terms of application is very... Now, not everyone, but the vast majority of them have either been customized or are unique. So, for example, let's just say the music player. They've included a music player called G4 Music. It looks a little bit like Amberall to me. I'm not sure if those two projects are related at all, but they look somewhat similar. Although I think G4 Music is actually more full-featured than Amberall in terms of like it allows you to do playlists and stuff like that. But it's a choice of music player that I've actually never seen before in a Linux distribution. So that's one way that it's different. They do include the regular choices like LibreOffice and what appears to be GNOME videos. So they have made some choices. Or it look actually, from what I see from here, I can actually show you this here on camera. 
this looks like S this is something called SM player. I'm not actually sure what that is. It my original thought that this was good on videos, but it's actually not. So yeah, they've made some choices when it comes to software that are a little bit unusual. So that is the baseline of what it is. It's an XFC based Manjaro based distribution that has made interesting choices when it comes to what's included inside of the distro. Now, as you'll as you see here on the screen and as you'll see in the B-roll as we go along, they've done an interesting and very good job of making XFCE look kind of fantastic. I'm not going to lie. My first impression of this when I first launched into it was that this is a very pretty distribution. So let's go ahead and get into some of the customizations that they've made. And this is kind of transitioning to, is it good? So I'm not doing my questions in order here. We'll talk about who it's for towards the end. So is it good? And the answer to that question is for me, at least from the small amount of time that I've spent with it, is kind of yeah. And the, what, what makes it good is that you can tell from the bottom up that they've done a really spectacular job of making choices that impact your daily use of the distro. Now, I was very careful with my wording there because I think it's important to understand. Every single part of this distro has been touched by the distro maintainers to be their own. Now, it doesn't mean that things that aren't you that are usually included in XFC aren't here, that they are. So if we went to the settings manager here, you'll see that it looks frankly very like every XFCE panel out there. One of the coolest parts about XFCE is that it allows developers to add things to this panel, and Tromjaro has done that. So the regular XFCE customization tools are here. So appearance is here so you can change your regular GTK theme. You can change your icons, your fonts, and you can go change the cursor and all that stuff just like you would in traditional XFCE. But where they've added stuff are things like the Tromjaro layout switcher. So it comes with three layouts. Now it actually comes with more than that and I'll show you that in a minute. But the three that Tr Tromjaro has created are these, or the, or I should say the six that Tromjaro has created are these six here, and they're all very unlike traditional XFC fare. So we have this one here, which I guess is the closest to traditional XFC. It has the panel along the bottom and the panel along the top. We have this one here, which is a somewhat reminiscent of like Ubuntu, I suppose. Then we have one that's even closer to Unity, which is this one here, which is this is here, one here is the default. Sometimes it does ask you for the administrator password. So this one here is the closest one to like Unity or whatever. And then there's this one here, which is more GNOME-like. And then there's this one here, which goes along the top. Why some of them ask you for your password and some of them don't, I don't actually know. Then there's this one here, which is all the way along the bottom, which is more of a, tr a Windows traditional paradigm. So those are the six that it includes. And they're all, I mean, they're all fairly similar in terms of like they use the same icons and things like that, but they have different layouts for whatever you're comfortable with. And like I said, that's not something that is included in traditional XFC. Now, there are other options for you if you want to have more traditional XFC options. So if you go to panel profiles, you have every single one of these options here. Now, this is not included in regular XFC, but it, the capability is there. So you could choose like, say, Redmond 7 and, and apply that, and it would actually look something like this. And it's not perfect, I would say, but if you wanted to go to something like uh, GNOME 2, you could apply that one. And that one looks more like GNOME 2. And then you would leave behind the customizations that Tromjaro has offered. Now, before I started reading their website and stuff, which I'll show you here in a minute, I thought that that was all that it was because I traditionally, as I usually do, don't read beyond the thing that I'm reading at the moment. So I didn't see this part here, even though it's like, bam, right there in my face. But... You can go right back to these if you want to. Even if you switch to a traditional XFC layout, you can go back to the default one here. Just enter your password and it will go back to things. Now, what I'm honestly surprised about is one of the things that I, I seem to remember with the panel profiles thing in traditional XFC is that the widgets tend to crash a lot, if I remember right. I've switched between these layouts many times over the course of the time I've been using Tromjaro. And I haven't noticed any time where the widgets have crashed. Now, there's not a lot of widgets up there. There's just a sys tray, a clock, and the workspace switcher. That's all there is. Well, and the menu up here. But I've never seen any of them crash, which is astonishing because it 
switch is fairly smooth. Yes, it takes a little bit of time, but it's not a lot of time, and it does a really good job. Now, going back to what I said before, that they've every single part of the operating system they've touched and customized. So, in addition to the things that are normally here from XFC, we also have the theme switcher. So that gives you about 18 different color schemes that you can choose from and they're all you know similar you get, you get your traditional dark themes and basically that just changes the accent color and then you get the white themes that you can change to and those all have their different accent colors and you know they all look like I said basically the same but you choose between light and dark and the accent color so it's not so much a theme as choosing a different accent color and that's very nice because xfc does not have traditionally accent colors it has gtk themes that come with different xf with different accent colors i should say so that's a little bit different. Now, I'm going to meander just for a second into something a little bit negative here. And because they've mixed two different ways of changing themes, they don't always work all that well together. So you have this, which is the Tromjara way of doing it. And that just keeps you basically on the same GTK theme, but with a different either light or dark theme or a different accent color, depending on what mixture you have. But if you were to go into the, to the appearance and choose something different let's just say you choose chose add weight to dark yes it looks okay but depending on which one you choose sometimes they don't look so great together right it, it, you can see here that the maybe it's just this one particular theme that i downloaded just to test their little app store but the highlight color is all wonky and stuff like that so they don't really all the, they don't always all the time mix all that well together but just like with the layouts you can go back to the Manjaro switcher here and just choose one of these. So those aren't the only two areas that they've customized. Like I said, it goes really deep into the operating system. So they have added support for the AUR, obviously, here, but also flat packs and app images are first class citizens. So you can install things from Flathub if you want to. You can do so through the terminal or however you want to do that. But they've also included the app image launcher. So if you want to use app images, app images are here. They've also added a lot of different things in cl for controlling your hardware. So, for example, uh, Cleaner is a cleaner called, I can't, like, I can't pronounce that word, but it's a cleaner for your system files, which is not normal. It has the RGB light settings here, which is the OpenRGB, I believe, application. So you can, if you have hardware peripherals that have RGB, you can control that right from here. There's also integrated mouse gestures so if you have a trackpad you can use mouse gestures that is definitely not something that is traditionally in xfc which it's actually nice i can't test it because i don't have a, a touchpad but it's there and really cool also they've integrated cron jobs right here into the settings panel uh, and that's not something you see very often in any desktop environment or dis distribution the only other one that I know that has a front-end GUI for cron jobs is MX Linux. And that, honestly, cron jobs are horrendously complicated for brand new users. They, they just are. Now, if you've done them once or twice, it's not that bad. But they always entail editing, editing the cron tab or whatever in the terminal, and then you have to understand the syntax behind everything, and then you have to set up the file correctly and all this stuff, right? So a front-end GUI for that kind of thing is very good for brand new users. One of the things about distributions that always drive me crazy is that the selection of wallpapers that they have included out of the box are usually so mundane and boring that I don't even know why they bothered. Now, I don't know if this is just because distro maintainers have a severe lack of creativity when it comes to wallpapers or if they just don't consider it important, but whatever. But I think that the wallpaper selection that a distribution offers is truly important because it shows, and I've talked about this before, it shows that the distro maintainer has put effort into how their desktop environment and distribution actually looks and feels. And it al also gives you an idea of how interested they are in allowing their users to customize things. And one of the things that Tromjaro does really, really well is they've included a ton of wallpapers. And honestly, I don't think that I've ever seen a distribution out there that has included this kind of wallpaper selection, nor have I seen a distribution out there that has chosen such good wallpapers. So there are dozens of wallpapers here, and there aren't very many that I'd say are bad. Like, you know, there's this one and there's this one. I mean, you know, that one's, you know, take it or leave it. But a lot of them have light and dark versions. So if you're using the light or dark version of the Tromjaro theme, you can switch between them. I wish it did it automatically, but it doesn't seem to. 
but still you can see all of these wallpapers are really quite good now i mean obviously wallpapers are a, you know a very personal taste and you can use whatever wallpaper you want but i think that it is very important for distribution to include really good wallpapers and this one definitely does and they're all you know variations on a theme they're all this kind of illustrated type of wallpaper you don't see anything here that is realistic in terms of actual like images or photographs or whatever but i think that they're all really really fantastic and that's just one more area that you can see that they've put a lot of effort into to ensuring is a good experience for their users now in terms of look and feel overall the different layouts and stuff like that i really like that they give their users choice obviously i would like them to offer the ability to uh, create more layouts and stuff like that but they kind of have with the xfc panel layout so you could create your panel layout in, in that application and go about that way because you can obviously save your own there uh, i like the wallpaper or the general gtk theme is very nice the icon theme is very nice as well so to answer the question is it good i would have to say yes now before we jump into who it's for let's talk a little bit about the thing that it's based on manjaro so this is based on manjaro it uses the xfc kernel so if we open up a terminal here and do uname dash a you'll see that it's using version 6.1.12 it does have the the distro name there tom jaro but it looks like it's using the simple manjaro kernel it uses an or a normal amount of memory for xfc out of the box i don't think i can show you here and actually be fair about it because we've opened up stuff. Yeah, as you can see, it's using 2156. And honestly, I have nothing open other than the settings panel. So, well, it looks like I have the application finder here. So we can close that and we can close this here and we'll see if that makes much of a difference. I don't think that it will. Oh, I also have, uh, yeah, I can close that. That's gonna be the big one. Yeah, yeah, still using 1486. Now, obviously that's not fair because it, services and stuff running in the background. But when I've checked it before after first launching it, it was using around 900 megs out of the box. And honestly, that's quite high for XFC. XFC usually ranges between five and seven, but you know, that's not that big of a deal. It's still just something that I noticed. By default, it seems to use ZSH as its default shell. So that's something that they've also chosen to customize. They have their own prompt here as well. So I, it looks like if you want to, you could use Bash. Bash is here. They have a Bash RC, but it doesn't look like they've done anything to customize their Bash RC uh, to make it look the same as their ZSH, which they could have done if they wanted to, but their default is ZSH. Going back to the whole Manjaro thing, they've taken out a lot of the stuff that Manjaro puts in it, so you don't see anything like Free Office or any of that stuff that Manjaro usually puts because none of those things are considered quote unquote trade free. So some of the things that Manjaro includes aren't here the other thing that we should talk about are updates because it's based on manjaro you're going to be a little bit behind the regular arch distributions now whether or not they've chosen that for a reason i can't say now their their mandate on their website if i can show you here the reason why they've chosen manjaro is this one here indeed manjaro can be seen as a trade as trade free since they do not collect people's people's data ask them for money in order to use their operating system and so forth. However, they promote trade-based applications and their default Manjaro installations such as Steam, FreeOffice, and Man Microsoft Office. I didn't know Manjaro had Microsoft Office on there. I'm assuming they mean the web apps, but whatever. And maybe other packages too. These packages want something from people, a trade, either money or data or attention. Therefore, we removed all such packages and only kept plus added tree trade free packages we wanted a linux distribution that is honest and does not want to deceive you into all kinds of trading schemes on top of that we wanted to improve the desktop ex experience in our own way so we added custom changes improvements and then they ha have a whole list of stuff here that they've changed and i'll go through here this stuff here in just a second because I, I do think it's important but the idea behind manjaro is that it's a stable version of ours right they hold everything that's in the arch repositories for a couple weeks they don't say anything on the tramjaro website whether or not that was important to them honestly i would like this distribution a lot more if it was based on just regular arch now the reason why i say that is because i'm biased against manjaro so take that for how you will but that's just something to keep in mind as well if you don't like manjaro you may not like this because it is based on manjaro even if they have taken some of the stuff out 
So the last part of this section that I want to talk about are some of the things that they've changed that I haven't covered. So we've talked about the layout switcher and the theme switcher. I've talked about some of the themes and icons that they've changed. I didn't show you that they've included the chaotic AUR. I'll show that in B-roll, I think. They've also, as I've shown you, included a lot of hand-picked wallpaper. They've created their own icon pack. They've also included the global menus, even though if it doesn't always work with every application. There's supposed to be a global menu up here uh, that's more filled out than what this is. They've also added more settings to the settings manager, which I've show, shown you. We, we talked about the gestures for the mouse, touchpad, and touchscreen. As I said before, they included the flat packs and the AUR, so you have selection of those. They've also supported app images. Now, interestingly, and I'll show this in B-roll here in a second, when you update... They also have included time shift, and they've done it in a really weird way because it's actually using rsync if you choose ext4, I'm ass which I did. I'm assuming if you chose ButterFS, it would also use time shift and just use the ButterFS snapshots. The syntax there looks very much like they're doing some kind of magic in terms of making it look like a ButterFS snapshot, but it's really using rsync. It's interesting. Either way, they take snapshots every time you do an update, which is fantastic every distribution should do that even if you don't use butterfs as default the last thing that i want to talk about is this tweak version of firefox it is firefox itself it's not librewolf which i'm kind of surprised about i thought that they would just use librewolf seeing how that does most of the stuff that they've talked about but they said here we ship a heavily tweaked version of firefox we have removed most annoyances and trackers from firefox plus added a handful of add-ons to set them up again why didn't it just use LibreWolf? I'm not sure. Maybe they didn't want to compile it or something like that. Or they just are more interested in doing their own things, whatever. So in terms of what they've included, they have a Sci-Hub X now, which I have no clue what that is. They have something called the Wayback Machine, which is, you know, just a link to the Wayback Machine. I'm not sure why that's important for them to include. And they have some... I'm not actually sure what... This is Lib Redirect. I'm not sure what that actually does, to be honest with you. It looks like, if, now if you went to YouTube.com, what would it do? Oh, it takes you to the free version of it. That's cool. All right, that makes sense. So there's apparently open versions of all of these things and it'll take you to the open front end for YouTube, TikTok, Reddit, whatever. That's really neat. Uh, I didn't actually take a look at that before and that's kind of cool. In terms of other extensions that they've included they've actually included quite a few they've firefox translations another speed dial which allows them to change the new tab page sponsor block which will skip sponsored ads and in, in, in youtube things bypass paywall thing which is i mean there's a lot of things here that are you know as someone who may actually makes money through advertisements i probably should say, say not use but you know a lot of people do use and ublock origin is here key pass xc the browser extension is here so yeah they've done a interesting job of making Firefox there. I don't really care for people making extension choices for me. If I were to end up using this as my daily driver, the vast majority of those extensions would be gone. So that work there would be kind of lost for me. And I think probably for most people too, because the vast majority of people make their own choices when it comes to uh, extensions. So moving on to the last section here is who's it for? And the answer to that question is... It can be for pretty much anybody. I know that kind of sounds like I'm crapping out, but if you are interested in Manjaro but don't like some of the choices that Manjaro has made, then Tromjaro is a good option for you. If you like XFCE but you don't like how old feeling vanilla XFCE is, this is also a good option for you because it's XFCE made pretty. If you're someone who values the idea of a trade-free distribution, this is one of the only operating systems out there that uses quote-unquote trade-free software. Most other distributions who are interested in this kind of thing usually use Libre software, which is a little bit different, as I explained earlier. So the answer of who this is for really does depend on what you're looking for in a distribution. And for me personally, as I said, I would like this distribution just a little bit more if it was based on Vanilla Arch instead of Manjaro, simply because I do have that bias against Manjaro because of some of the decisions that they've made. And I guess I would give them a pass on basing on Manjaro if I knew the reason why they've done so is because of those delayed repositories. And maybe that is just kind of a given. But again, it's something that I, I would still have in the back of my mind. Man, I'm using Manjaro and I really don't want to. You know what I mean? So 
yeah, that is Tramjaro. I will sprinkle throughout my video here some of the B-rolls and stuff like that. Hopefully I've done a fairly good job of that, kind of intermingling them, because I did take quite a bit of B-roll earlier and then kind of meandered past my plan there, but whatever. So so that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on Tramjaro, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for LiberaPay and YouTube will be in the video description as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channels would just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are all awesome. I know, it, again, it sounds like I memorized this, which I have memorized it, but it doesn't mean I mean it any less. So thank you for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time. Nailed the word.